All right, mise en place is your main thing. So I'm getting my breader together for the uh, chopstick. So I have some flour. I only have a small pack of chopsticks, so only for four because there's only two of us that's going to really eat. So I'm just putting a little flour in. Don't do a lot because you don't want to use up all of your, your flour. We're going to add some, uh, some salt. A little bit of salt in there. We're going to do a little pepper. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, a little garlic powder in there for a little onion powder. I just saw somebody walk across the yard, so I was like, uh, anyway, all right, a little onion powder. Um, and I'm throwing these last two in there for a little razzle basil. It's a little razzle basil. A little razzle. And a little dazzle. All right, so this is my breader that's going to go over top of the, the meat. All right, so we're just going to set that aside. So now I'm going to mise en place all of my other stuff that needs to go with it. Uh, I got my cutting board here. Uh, I'm going to get a damp paper towel so that my cutting board doesn't slide. All right, so my damp cutting board, so that my cutting board won't slide while I am cutting. Let me adjust this one so that you can see my actual cutting board and me. So I'm going to uh, julienne this onion and my thing is sliding. Okay, uh, all right, it's still sliding, but hopefully that'll stay. So we're gonna do a small or thin julienne onion so we're going to first start off with cutting that part of the onion off we're going to use the bag as our trash over here i only need half the onion like i said i'm not cooking a lot because it's just brandy and myself eating so then we're going to peel the this part off the onion skin off uh, I also have my potatoes boiling as I'm doing all of this prep. I put my potatoes on first so that uh, my potatoes and uh, my steak can be done pretty much almost close together. So you're going to cut the, the base off. So as you can see, I have my onion like so, but I still left the root kind of connected so that the uh, onion doesn't fall apart while I'm cutting. So then I'm just going to thinly slice this. So that uh, they cook quickly and you don't want, you know, big old pieces of onion in your, but maybe you like big pieces of onion. So you can go as thick as you like or as thin as you like. But in this house, we don't like big pieces of onion because some of us don't eat vegetables. Uh, once I get all the way cut down. Then I'm going to cut the roots off so that, boom, so that they fall apart and they are like so like that. So, but this is pretty much all of the onions I need uh, for my recipe. So now I'm going to put this off to the side in a small container. container. Uh, let me grab that. That's over here. So I'm just putting my onions off to the side for later use, but I'm just getting all of my mise en place together so that I can uh, use it all later as the recipe goes on. So I have my country fried steaks right here, Walmart. Uh, so we're going to take these out of the packets. Uh, if you want to use gloves, you can. If not, you can just use your hands. I am using my bare hand. Uh, I'm going to... Oh, it's actually more than 
thought it was only four. But anyway, oh, they just fit. So we're going to lay these out on the cutting board so that we can season them. Hey, I see my thing is sliding. So we can season them with pretty much the same seasoning that we put in our breader. Touch my phone. All right. So as you can see, I got my steaks uh, on the cutting board ready to be seasoned. Moving some of the trash out the way. So we we'll start off with a little salt and pepper on these. You, just, you don't want to go too heavy with the salt because uh, don't forget you have salt, uh, the seasoning salt and the Texas Roadhouse salt and regular salt in your breader. So you don't want to over salt it because uh, then you'll just be salty. So we're doing all of the seasonings that we put in our breader except the razzle dazzle part so this is onion powder don't want to go too heavy on that because you already have you're going to put onions in there so now we're doing the garlic and lastly we're going to do the pepper All right, so then we're going to flip these over and we're going to repeat. If you went a little heavy on the salt on the first side, you can go lighter on this side. But as long as everybody has a little, little seasoning on it, that's all that we need right now. And yes, I could have left these containers open, but I did not, wasn't thinking. So yes, we're almost out of onion powder. Hopefully I have some more, because I just came from the store, but All right, so in my pan, I'm going to preheat it preheated uh you asking why I did not turn my pan on while I was seasoning this because I want the the um season to kind of sit for a little bit and let it uh work its way in into the magic so now I'm turning my pan on, and in my pan, uh, I have it on about a medium heat. I'm going to add a little bit of oil. Uh, the oil, I'm just going to say about, about that much oil in the bottom of the pan because uh, when we put our steaks in the pan, we want some of the flour mixture to stick on there, and that's what's going to make our, uh, our gravy. So, uh, yes, I'll be back. Let me get all of this together. But you can stay. You can stay. All right, so for my uh, pan, I am just going to add a, uh, the vegetable oil, about that much in there, um, to let that get nice and hot. And I also grabbed some chicken broth. Yes, uh, I had chicken broth open, uh, so that's why I'm using chicken broth, but you can use beef broth so that your gravy is a nice and brown color. I'm going to add a little razzle dazzle to mine to make mine turn brown, but you don't have to do that. You can just use a little uh, beef broth versus chicken broth. Boom. So I had a little water in my pan, so I'm letting all of that kind of 
dissolve because you pull the oil in the pan while the uh, water's in there, you're going to start a fire. You're going to start a fire. I know you have good renters and uh, homeowners insurance, but you don't want it to burn down and you be at Bernice's house. Uh, but yes, so now I got to figure out how I am going to situate this camera thing so that you can see my method of madness, but we'll get that together in a second. All right, I'm about to add the oil now. All of my water is pretty much has evaporated. And this thing is okay. So let me take you with me on this one. So as you can see, I have, you know, pretty much coated the pan. Uh, I should have went a little bit less, but hey, what can you do? I can always uh, drain it afterwards, but that's another thing. All right, so we are ready for a little razzle McDazzle. So we're going to take our breader that we made earlier, which is the seasoning and everything. Make sure your seasoning is all mixed around like that. And if you want... You can use it to fry some chicken. Same, same concept. Same concept. All right. So I'm going to put my, my meats in there. Kind of pack it in. Because, you know. So this is how it all looks. So that's the breader on there. Shake off any excess there gonna do them all because I want to say they can for the most part fit all can fit in my pan so we're getting those together So I have all four of my pieces completely breaded and I put them back on my cutting board. Uh, try to only use one hand because you don't want both hands to be uh, all sticky and messy, but you may have on gloves. So you can uh, use your gloves. Take your, remove your gloves. All right. So I'm going to say my oil is a little hot. You can always check it and see if you, if it's hot enough for you. Uh, you can take a little piece, and you see that 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 fry there. All right, so I'm gonna start with my thicker pieces uh, in here first, because you know those take the the longest to to cook. I'm trying to see, make sure I got this camera kind of situated on it correctly. All right, so at the moment, only two can fit in there. So we're going to let those uh, get a little fry, 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 fry. I got my tongs ready to. You want to fry it up, to, uh, get a little golden. Let me grab a plate from out here. I'm going to have to remove the first two I put in. And put the other set in. So it's fine on one side. Uh, yes. So as it's frying, as you can see uh, from this video, and I'm talking on this video, but we have it frying. You want to uh, check to see if it got a little crispiness on it, see how that's right there. But I wanted to, 
to get a little bit more uh, darker. So we are doing that. And as you can see, I have my small thing of potatoes going on over there. All right, let's check it again. All right, we can go ahead and flip it. Let it flip it some more. We're going to flip it again, but we're just going and we're just getting that all taken care of right there. I need to stay on this can. Oh, and my shirt says Dorothy in the streets, Blanche in the sheets. Yes, yeah, so we have a little fry action working here. I'm going to move this camera over some. There we go. So since these have shrunk a little, I might can fit one of these small one, smaller ones in into that open space there. Um, yes, so we, I'm going to need to take some of this oil out, but I'll show you how to do that in a second because I have a pan in the sink there that will pour some of this oil out right before I start to cook my onions. So as you can see, I have those in there still frying up. They got a, a slightly crispy skin on there, kind of like a uh, country fried steak thing happening. So we're going to continue to let them go for a little bit. And I have red potatoes going in there, skin on. But if you want to take the skin off, you can. That's your personal preference. Uh, you want to come say hello to the people? Yeah, it's on this one. Are you saying hey? Hi. <laughs> All right, so as you can see, we got our, our meat still going. I want to turn my heat up just a tad. I like the way it's going, but I just need a little bit more fire and desire. So I'm going to remove this one from out of there. And I'm going to add my last one into the mix of things. All right, so I am going to pause this, but you can stay. I'm going to pause this, uh, and I need to wash my hands while that continues to fry over there. So, yes, I'm going to go wash my hands. And now I can remove all of this stuff because I won't need my cutting board anymore. I can clean this all up. I can take my knife as well. Put that all in the sink.
Look at that. Look at that. And take that one out. Look at that. That's a nice crisp on that one. Nice. Right, we're going to remove this one. So we got that last one in there. As you see, I got a, a little bit too much oil in there. So I just adjusted my heat because we're going to turn it down completely after I take this last one out anyway. But uh, yes, I'm going to pour a little bit of this oil out, throw my onions in there, but you'll see all of that here shortly. So as you can see, I removed some of my, most of that oil from out there and I'm now throwing in my onions to saute them up. So again, you wanna season these as well. Don't want to go too heavy on the salt because don't forget you have salt on everything else as well. And you can always add more salt, but you can never take salt away. So as you can see, salt in my onion. All right, as you can see, my onions are starting to get translucent in the pan. So we have that going so that you're not just seeing the side of my face anymore. So we have the onions starting to get a little translucent there. We'll let them go for a little while longer because there's some bigger pieces in there. But as you can see, they're starting to, to get thin. And clear. All right, so we got them in there, like so, like that. Oh. All right, so now we have what we're going to add our items back 
into this pan. So we have all of our items back in there. And now we're gonna add some, the chicken broth. So now I'm going to get a lid to put on there to let those cook, cook down. So I have a lid on there. Uh, as you can see, I almost, almost covered the meat. Uh, but we're gonna put those in there, let it uh, come to let it come to a boil, and then we're gonna take it down and let it slowly cook because this is a tough piece of meat, and we want it to uh, to get tender. So we're letting that uh, cook. Uh, so about twenty to thirty minutes of cook time on that. And uh, we'll let that cook, and I'll come back once everything gets a little closer to done. Okay. So, uh, it's been about five minutes, maybe ten, since we put everything in the pan. And as you can see, my juice in there is getting a little thick. Uh, if you don't, if you feel that your steaks aren't tender enough, uh, Add, add a little water or a little bit more chicken uh, broth to it. Not a lot because you want it to cook down uh, to get thick um, to kind of coat everything and be your gravy for your mashed potatoes. So I'm going to let it cook for a little while longer and see how I feel about the, the thickness of the juice uh, in a little bit. I may add a little bit more chicken stock. And that way I won't have to do a slurry, which is cornstarch and water to combine to thicken it up. Uh, we're just going to let the flour that was cooked on the, the steak uh, kind of make its own gravy. All right, so our uh, potatoes are done. I'm going to take about three tablespoons of butter and put it in there. I'm gonna add a little salt, some pepper, some heavy cream, about a half a cup of that. And we're gonna add some milk. All right, and so now we're gonna get start mashing. All right. So my little four or five little potatoes are pretty much mashed. Uh, we, that's it. I noticed that my potatoes are a little thick. So I'm gonna add a little bit more heavy cream and a little bit more milk to kind of thin it out because these are gonna sit for a minute because my steaks are still cooking. So, the longer they sit, the thicker the potatoes will get. But you don't want it soupy or watery. I'm gonna show you here in a second. Let me make sure I got my 
my flavor is right. Let me get a, something to taste with. Okay, let me show you the consistency of my potatoes. So as you can see, they're loose, but not too loose. And there we are. So our potatoes are done. We're gonna put these back on the stove and let them sit while our steaks cook for maybe uh, two to three more minutes and I'll be back. Okay, we're back. Um, it's been about 20 minutes and here is my steak. I wanna say my gravy texture is the right consistency that I was looking for uh, so that it can also go over top of my mashed potatoes. But yeah, this is it. Uh, you can plate it up nicely. You can do whatever you need to do with it. But this is uh, chopsteak with gravy and mashed potatoes. Bye.